Final Cut Pro has just come to the iPad and I was fortunate enough to get early access so I can give you my thoughts on the good, the bad, and the ugly for Final Cut Pro on the iPad. This entire video is going to be edited from beginning to end on the iPad so that I can really put it through its paces and give my final thoughts. So first, let's talk about the good. And the iPad version of Final Cut Pro does have a lot going for it. The interface is so beautiful to look at. Apple went above and beyond when it comes to the interface. It really comes across as Apple having thought through every process of how you would use the iPad and made it as simple as possible. Everything feels extremely cohesive. The interface is very, very easy to navigate. Every button is easy to press, even though it's on a touch interface. Another really strong point for Final Cut Pro on the iPad is the performance. I was working with 4K 10-bit 60p footage on the timeline and it was running absolutely buttery smooth. I could apply effects no problem. I didn't have any hitches or stutters. Now I wasn't working with really ultra massive projects, but in my testing, I really was impressed with the performance coming out of the M2 chip on my iPad Pro. A problem that has plagued the desktop version of Final Cut Pro is waveforms. Oftentimes waveforms can take forever to draw in on your project and that is just precious time being wasted. However, on the iPad, the waveforms draw in so quickly. I have never needed to wait around for the waveforms to pop in. It has just been immediate and it vastly improves my workflow because I'm no longer sitting around waiting for the computer to do its thing. A feature that you'll be using the most on your iPad is of course cutting. And I think Apple absolutely nailed it here. You have your basic cut feature that you can press, but you also have a trim start and a trim end tool. And this is going to vastly speed up your workflow because you can very quickly make a cut, slide your playhead forward, and then select trim start or trim end, and that will remove all of the clip that's in the middle between that cut and your playhead. I was also really happy to see the inclusion of the range tool. I personally love using the range tool for making a quick selection and then deleting it. Again, this just makes your editing process that much faster, but you can also use it to add in keyframes with your audio. So rather than adding in individual keyframes when you want to raise or lower the volume on a specific clip, you can quickly add a range selection and drag the volume up and down and Final Cut Pro will automatically add in all the necessary keyframes to make that happen. I was also really happy to see the inclusion of multi-channel audio, and they also made it very easy for you to expand your audio components and select a singular track so you can apply your effects onto it, you can apply your volume settings, everything you could possibly need is all at the touch of a button. Another huge plus for Final Cut Pro on the iPad is the amazing new titles, generators, effects, and transitions that were just added in. These have a very professional feel and they're very customizable to make them look exactly as you need for your project. Another really cool and powerful feature is the soundtrack tool. This comes with 40 songs that you can apply onto your timeline. You can shorten it to whatever duration you need and then Final Cut Pro will use its machine learning to automatically adjust the length of that specific song, which can take out so much of the frustration when it comes to editing a song to match the perfect duration of your video. Another unexpected but really cool feature that Apple added was the Pro Camera. And it's so cool because you never even need to leave Final Cut Pro to create a really powerful video. And with the additions of stuff like ProRes on your iPad, the ability to adjust your white balance and focus, it really allows you to dial in your creative vision. And when you're done recording, your footage will already be inside of Final Cut Pro so you can skip the step of needing to import anything and get right into editing. One of my most favorite features is live drawing. I love how this adds the ability to add in your own creativity to your titles and templates directly inside of Final Cut Pro. And it is so easy to use, especially if you have an Apple Pencil. It also comes with a lot of much needed controls. For example, you can adjust the duration of your animation on the timeline. So you can get as creative with this as you like, and it's going to add so much of your own personal touch to your videos. So I'm really, really excited to see what content creators do with the live drawing feature. 
I was also really excited to see that voice isolation and noise removal made its way onto the iPad. This is huge for content creators who need to get their videos out quickly. Oftentimes, you don't always have time to sit around and wait for perfect audio. Having noise removal and voice isolation directly on the iPad is going to vastly speed up your editing process and it's going to make your videos stand out that much more. An issue that I frequently face in other video editing apps on the iPad is getting fine-tuned control over frame by frame cuts. And that is where the jog wheel comes into play on the iPad. Its implementation is so good and it makes it so that I don't even miss having a keyboard for those frame by frame edits. A feature that I was concerned about is how organization would work on the iPad. And I can say that Apple did a really phenomenal job here. You can add keywords to specific clips and then you can sort all of your footage by those keywords. You can of course favorite clips or reject them. So there are many different ways you can categorize your footage so that you can edit as quickly as possible. A feature that I wasn't expecting but I came to really love is the auto crop tool. This will auto analyze your scene, figure out what is the most important subject of that scene, and then it will auto animate your scene so that your subject stays perfectly in the center. This is going to be huge for content creators who are making vertical content on their iPads. And lastly, there is multicam mode. And I could not be happier with the implementation of the multicam on the iPad. Apple has really thought about if you're likely going to want to constantly change your audio source or just your video source. And of course you have full control over all of that, but you can also jump inside of the angle viewer, apply your effects onto a clip, and that is going to apply across your entire timeline in Final Cut Pro. So they absolutely nailed how multicams on the iPad should work and I could not be happier with the end result. The first feature that I feel like is really missing from Final Cut Pro on the iPad is auto captioning. I know the desktop version doesn't have it and I think that it should be there, but even more importantly, I really think it should be on the iPad version of Final Cut Pro. To me, the iPad version of Final Cut really feels like it's aimed at content creators who need to get videos out really fast. And a large part of that happens to be with auto captioning. So I feel like this is a missed opportunity and I really hope to see it in future iterations. This next issue also plagues the desktop version of Final Cut Pro. We desperately need easing on our keyframes. In the desktop version, you can at least add Bezier curves to your position, but there's no way to add any sort of easing onto the scale parameter or the rotation parameter. I'm really hoping that at some point we might even see a keyframe editor like what's found in Apple Motion. A frustration I was consistently running into is the inability to select multiple clips and then apply any sort of transform to them. So I couldn't scale up multiple clips at the same time or rotate multiple clips at the same time. I couldn't even use the auto crop tool. And this really seems like a missed opportunity because it would be so nice to have all my footage down on the timeline, select it all and then select auto crop for my vertical content. It's going to take so much more time to select each individual clip and then select auto crop and allow the analyzing to take place. Place. I would love the ability to be able to analyze it all at once. A really cool feature that I can easily see becoming an issue in the near future is the new soundtrack feature. That is because everybody is going to have access to the same 40 songs. Now I am sure that Apple is planning on adding more tracks to this over time. However, at the launch, you are going to hear these same songs all over YouTube for anybody who is using the iPad version of Final Cut Pro and who doesn't want to have to bother with trimming down a song to the perfect length of their video. I would really love to see Apple dive way deeper into the machine learning side of things to analyze any track that you drop onto your timeline to allow you to extend it or shorten it to your liking. This would massively speed up your workflow process and it would make editing on the iPad that much more fun. One of the most exciting features for Final Cut Pro on the iPad was the scene removal mask. I have been so looking forward to trying this out myself. However, I don't think that the scene removal mask is as good as it could be. According to the Final Cut Pro requirements, it says that you are to use a video with a static background captured using a stationary camera. And it also says to capture a few frames of the background without the subject at the beginning 
or the end. Now, I 100% understand why this is necessary. It's gonna make it so much easier for the computer to be able to interpret what you wanna remove and what you wanna keep in the scene. But this really doesn't feel like the machine learning of the future from one of the biggest and best tech companies on the planet. This feels much more akin to using Photo Booth from 10 to 15 years ago when you would slap in that roller coaster background as a kid. I would love to see Apple put way more resources into this background removal feature on the iPad. It has so many more diverse use cases than you might ever suspect. The last thing I want to talk about could be seen as a pro or it could be seen as a con. In the iPad version, the color adjustments feature is vastly different than the color adjustments found on the desktop version of Final Cut Pro. You don't have any of the color wheels that you use. It's much more like using Lightroom, which is a really great system if that's what you like to use. However, for those of us more accustomed to using the color wheels and getting finer control in that way, this could be a source of frustration. Final Cut on the iPad is a very capable piece of software, and I think that a lot of people are going to get a lot of great uses out of it. However, I think that Final Cut on the iPad is fundamentally missing a lot of the core features that make a pro app a pro app. For example, there are no compound clips in Final Cut, which is a very necessary feature on the desktop version. It does not have the object tracker, which is essential for applying color masks or just basic text items on your video. It doesn't have optical flow, which vastly improves how slow motion looks when you're not working with actual slow motion footage. You're unable to bring in any of your own LUTs. There are no adjustment layers, which this is not on the desktop version either, and this wouldn't be be that big of a deal except for we also don't have access to third-party plugins at this time. That is a feature that is coming but it's not here at this very moment. And something that's hugely important is there is no way to save an effects preset and this is one of my most vital tools on the desktop version of Final Cut Pro. It saves me hundreds of hours being able to click and drag my different effects presets onto my timeline. A tool that is missing is the trim tool. Now you can select the edges with the edge tool but you can't slide and edit like you would with the trim tool and this is really important when you're trying to adjust the pacing of a video. There is no speed ramping. Everything has to be at a set speed. So you have to make a cut, set it to 400% or whatever you want, but there's no way to actually ease into that speed. There's no way to save your media externally. You can bring in your media from an external source, but you cannot save that media in an external source, which means your project sizes are going to be huge. Essentially every clip of footage that you bring in on your iPad is going to be duplicated and saved directly to your iPad. And lastly, one of the biggest faults I find with this particular app is the inability to take your project from your iPad to send it over to your computer and then more importantly, to be able to send it back. Right now, it is a one-way road. You can send it from your iPad to the computer, but there is no going back. And that is a huge misstep. I wanna be able to edit everything I possibly could need on the iPad, send it over to my Mac where I can do fine-tune adjustments. Maybe I need to get back on the road with that same exact project, so I wanna be able to throw it back and again, not have to consider the fact that I don't have a keyboard and mouse. So I feel like this really negates a lot of the benefits of having Final Cut Pro on the iPad. So these are some of the core features that I feel like Final Cut Pro for the iPad is missing to really make it a pro app. Now with all this negative stuff that I'm saying, you might think that I hate Final Cut Pro for the iPad. That couldn't be farther from the truth. I love using Final Cut Pro on the iPad. It is such a capable piece of software. It is so fun to use. It has brought back the joy of editing just like I had 17 years ago when I first started with Final Cut Pro. But I think that calling it a pro app at this point might be a misconception. However, I have no doubt that Apple is going to really step up their game, listen to our feedback, and make this app the very best that it can possibly be for both amateur users and professional users. I think with a few updates, this app is going to absolutely take the world by storm with how powerful it could possibly be and with how easy it is to use on the iPad. So this brings me to the final question. Who is this app for? 
I personally believe that this app has been designed from the ground up with content creators in mind. It has so many amazing tools with live drawing and the pro camera and auto crop. I think that there are amazing tools for content creators to get their videos out as quickly as possible. However, if you are a post professional, you are working on a TV show, you are working on a feature length documentary, I can't say that Final Cut Pro on the iPad is necessarily made for you. I will say that it has some amazing use cases. I could very easily see myself on set editing quickly together a rough cut of whatever was just shot five minutes before, but I can't see myself making a feature length documentary on the iPad. And I think Apple knows that. They know their demographic. They know who this app is made for. They know that they are making it for content creators who need to get their videos out as quickly as possible and as conveniently as possible. And I think they absolutely nailed that here. So to summarize, Final Cut Pro for the iPad is amazing. I absolutely love using it but I think that it is missing some core features to call it a pro app at this point. That said, I highly recommend it. If you are a content creator, you need to get your videos out quickly. This is designed for you and you are going to love editing on it. If you got Final Cut Pro for the iPad, then you may wanna check out this video, which is my full beginner's guide to using Final Cut Pro on the iPad. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting this channel. It's because of you that I was able to get Final Cut Pro early and to get my hands on it to give you my thoughts. With that being said, I cannot wait to see you in the next one.